Greetings, all. Today, we will be examining the relatively rare fire-type Pokémon Heatmore, the Anteater Pokémon, and its uncommon bug-steel-type predator-prey counterpart, Durant, the Iron Ant Pokémon. Heatmore and Durant, while in no way genetically related to one another, are so strongly linked together by the physical forms, attributes, and ecology that they are effectively impossible to talk about on their own without the other one present for context. Heatmore possess a hunched body frame very similar to what might be seen with traditional anteaters, though their bodies have become exaggerated in form as an adaptation to their fire-type powers. They stand on a pair of two-toed feet with sharp yellow claws, matched in color by the three enormous claws that they have on each of their hands, which are perfect for tearing apart anthills and rocks. Their legs, head, and wrists are covered with gray skin, while the rest of their body is a deep red color, with yellow, wavy stripes radiating from their nether regions to their necks, like flames rising in the air. A series of gray tubes run along their backs and down around their nether regions into their stomach area as air channels for funneling air into their bodies, with exhaust ports for expelled gases being embedded into their wrists and their tail resembling a car exhaust, used for pumping fresh air and oxygen into their bodies. Their heads taper into a tubular point, with large eyes colored a dark black, and a tube-like mouth that serves as their primary method of both feeding and attacking with their fire-type attacks, concealing their long, thin tongue, which is almost always coated in fire. Their counterpart, Durant, are one of the few bug-type Pokémon that can be biologically described as true insects, with three pairs of dark gray legs and three proper body segments. Their bodies are a metallic gray color as a result of the organic iron carapace that serves as their exoskeleton, with circular spiracles along their body that serve as their primary method of breathing in the absence of lungs, and clear zigzag markings where their exoskeletal growth plates can be found, foregoing the shedding of exoskeletal material like other insects as a result of the physical nature of their metallic bodies. They have a pair of metallic antenna that they use for a number of purposes, including detecting air temperature and scents in the air, and their eyes are a deep red, marked by only a black ring around their pupil. Unlike most insects, these creatures do not possess compound eyes, instead opting for a single lens structure that maintains greater depth perception to aid in counteracting their primary predator, Heatmore. Their primary means of offense comes as a consequence of their massive metallic mandibles, which are capable of cutting through incredibly hard materials and in turn are perfect for tunneling through hard rock and dealing incredible physical trauma to anything that dares to disturb them. Unlike traditional anteaters, Heatmore have developed fire-type powers as a result of a biological arms race between them and their primary prey, Durant, and it has drastically altered their anatomy as a result. The source of these creatures' power is an intense fire that constantly burns deep inside of their bodies serving as both the stomach and intestinal tract. Anything that they eat is transferred to here through their esophagus, which secretes digestive enzymes that liquefy their food, the nutrients being rapidly absorbed through its interior surface like a small intestine, before the solid waste is dumped into the heart of this flame, incinerating it and disposing of it in a single fell swoop. In order to keep this fire raging at all times, the tails of Heatmore have been converted into an intake system that serves as a secondary respiratory system, Every time they inhale with their primary respiratory system, the muscles in their tail expand and contract rapidly enough to create a temporary vacuum, drawing in a large volume of air and providing the internal fire the oxygen needs to keep burning, as they naturally secrete a volatile, flammable liquid that ignites when exposed to oxygen as the basis for the fire in the first place. Aside from allowing them to freely channel this flame through the organic tubules that can be observed on their backs and undersides to use fire-type special attacks, this system also serves as the source behind Heatmore's most unique physical attribute, their tongues. While their tongues are long and sturdy, and can hit relatively hard as a result of their highly elastic nature, they are unable to break through the armor of their primary prey, Durant, on their own. However, as it turns out, the saliva of these creatures has evolved to become extremely flammable, and combined with their fiery insides, they can pump the heat from their internal fire into their mouths to ignite their long tongues, coating them in an intense sheath of fire. Aside from giving them a severe edge against their primary prey item, this power also grants these creatures access to a unique signature attack, 
Fire Lash, which is a moderately powerful move that involves these creatures sticking out their ignited tongues and rapidly lashing their target like it was a whip. Aside from being fairly powerful, the sheer speed with which a target is hit with their tongue, as well as the intensity of the flame that burns on it, is enough to burn past the first layer of hide or armor they might possess, singeing them and leaving a lasting burn that effectively lowers their defense stat with every successful strike, making it a devastating move to have to face over the course of a long battle. Because of the internal fire that rages inside of them, and their habit of devouring entire ant colonies in a single sitting, these creatures have access to gluttony and flash fire as base abilities, and while the excess gas from combustion that they emit from their wrists in order to maximize airflow through their main body is usually light enough that it doesn't have a major effect in battle, in rare cases, these creatures can emit so much of the smoke from their body that it cloaks them entirely, granting them access to white smoke as a hidden ability. As far as their stats go, these creatures are not exactly the most powerful fire-type Pokémon, but they are no slouches either and can make some use of their odd mix of moves. While a large portion of their stats are below average for a fully evolved fire-type Pokémon, though their base special attack stat is only slightly so and is actually their best stat, their base HP and attack stats are above average for their type. As such, while they aren't the best at taking hits, these creatures can still dish out some decent punishment and make good use of their abnormal form to make their presence known in battle. Durant, while perhaps not among the largest of Pokémon, are definitely among the fiercest, and it would be unwise to challenge them to a direct fight, even with fire at one's disposal. While their metallic carapace was initially designed as a form of protection against heat more, the relatively non-porous surface also tempers the creatures and allows them to survive in extreme temperatures at both ends of the scale and even where water sources are contaminated with toxic chemicals, being capable of processing any toxins with great ease. While this normally means that they could live and survive in just about any type of environment, due to the manner in which they generally build their nests, these creatures generally confine themselves to mountainous environments. In stark contrast to normal ants, Durant colonies do not have a queen, with the structure being a more communal affair and with every member of the colony having the capacity to reproduce. The nests of Durant consist of massive underground tunnels built into the hard bedrock of the mountains that they occupy, designed with different chambers and compartments for specific purposes, just as in a traditional ant nest and can extend to as much as half a mile underground. The only reason why they can dig to this depth is because they choose to make their tunnels in rock that is strong enough to support such structures in the first place. When they leave their nest in order to hunt for food, they will usually do so in packs of about a dozen members or so, and while their small size might make them seem relatively weak, they are incredibly dangerous and can easily take down creatures much larger than themselves with relative ease. This is in no small part due to their massive metallic mandibles, which are strong enough to cut through steel beams and can thus make quick work of any beast that they may come across, even being able to learn the devastating guillotine attack. This, in combination with their easily irritated personalities and pack mentality, is what allows these creatures to possess hustle and swarm as base abilities. While they are normally very hardworking creatures though, it is noted that in rare occasions, Defects in their mental processing systems can make them fairly lazy and uninterested in doing much of anything, causing them to have Truant as a hidden ability. In terms of their stats, these creatures clearly show themselves to be all about physical power and mobility, as while their base HP, special attack, and special defense stats are all below average for both a fully evolved bug and steel type Pokemon, their base attack, defense, and speed stats are all above average for both types with the exception of fully evolved Steel-type Pokémon in terms of their base defense stat. Overall, these creatures might not have a lot going for them in terms of dealing with special attackers, but their incredible agility and powerful mandibles can still make them a painful irritation without the right type of offense on one side. The relationship that exists between Heatmore and Durant is one born of a biological arms race, as the two have created countermeasures for each other in order to keep their populations from being completely decimated. It is thought that, in older times, these creatures were very much more like traditional anteaters and ants in form, and that their initial relationship of predator and prey was very much already set. However, fossil evidence suggests that at one point, Durant made the first step in this arms race 
by developing exoskeletons that contained excessive amounts of iron compounds in them that made their bodies as hard as steel. This would have made it very difficult for Hedmore to feed on them, as they likely did not have the biological equipment needed to penetrate their bodies or even digest them. In response, Hedmore experimented with different forms of dealing with this defense until they began to develop the ability to use fire as a biological weapon, allowing them to develop into the heat more that we observe today, using fire to melt through the bodies of their prey and expose their soft insides, which they could then ingest, while their metallic exoskeletons were burned by their internal fire. In looking at their modern form, it might seem like this ultimately put heat more back at the top and left Durant with little to do to defend themselves, but in reality, this is actually far from the case. Granted, the addition of fire does make short work of Durant as a result of them being doubly weak to it, but they are not completely undone just because of this. For one thing, they naturally gain access to the dig attack, which they can use to make short work of Heatmore as a result of their limited physical defenses. Secondly, because they tend to travel in small swarms, they can easily use the numbers game to their advantage to attack and systematically destroy any Heatmore that dares to enter into their territory, or even use small groups to lure Heatmore away from the entrance to their nesting sites. Thirdly, and perhaps most basic of all, even if these insects need to retreat, they are much faster than Heatmore and can thus easily leave them in the dust, making it difficult to pursue them for any serious length of time. As such, Despite the serious type disadvantage they have against Heatmore, Durant are much more evenly matched against them than they might initially appear, thus stabilizing the overall ecology in which their relationship is present and maintaining a fair trade between the two in terms of their population stability. While they might be incredibly different from each other and share a bit of a violent relationship, both Heatmore and Durant are interesting creatures that can definitely play a part as offensive fighters in the parties of just about any trainer. Whether you're looking for a bit of heat to add to your team, or a fast physical fighter that can rip the opposition to shreds, these creatures can definitely provide you some assistance if you're willing to work with their odd forms and powers. If you can't decide between the two, and wish to work with both of them at the same time though, make sure to keep them as far away from each other as possible, especially at mealtime. They might be a bit more cooperative if they are given time to bond, but you can never be too careful and it would likely do more harm to you and your team if one ended up snacking on the other, or if you find your heat more to be missing a limb or two the next time it comes out to fight. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.